What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Beyond the 90, where Everton have grew to Leicester City. We're... Ah, overall facts, not really happy. Um, this should have been an opportunity to take the win. You look at our previous games and you look at the people we came up against and you can understand why we didn't win. Um, half of probably the Fulham game where we could have probably got something more. We should have got something more at the game. Um, but overall, you look at the teams we played, Tottenham getting a tough team. You're looking at Aston Villa, tough team, Crystal Palace. Yes, they are slow, but they're a good team as well. Everton was the first team we're coming up against. It goes, right, let's show them what we can do. And we got a draw. Now, this kind of reaction, I've seen it on both sides, not just on social media, just from speaking to people as well. Um, there's some people, and and what I don't like about this, it, it's kind of a five out of ten performance. And some people go, that's harsh. Um, but genuinely, I'm just going to call it how I see it. Um, there was elements that were really good in the game. And some really good bits that I really enjoyed. But there's also some really bad bits. And then bad bits can be changed. And we've got the players in the squad and the personnel to make those changes to win the games or turn this draw into a win. Now, the problem is we're six games in at this moment in time. Five games in, sorry. At this moment in time, we're a minus two goal difference. F played five, got three points. This we are where we deserve to be in the table. Are we bottom? Or we'll, I'll come on to the table in a second because I think this sums it up. But if you didn't like Steve Cooper before, you're going to see the reasons why. And you also, you're also going to see the reasons why you're going to get reasons to benefit and go, this is why my opinion is. Also in the same game, you will see other people going, well, what do you expect? We're five games into a new season. We're playing better than we were in pre-season. Um, it's a new system. It's a new team. We're building squad players in. It's going to take time to implement his style. Give him a break. And I think both can be kind of right at the same time. Um, so let's talk about the starting lineup. I think some things have been mentioned already. So we made some changes and some interesting players that I say interesting. I don't like because people use interesting and tell them, oh, he was interesting when, when the reality is not probably what they mean. Some things that I thought was worth noting. Obviously, the back line remained pretty much the same. Um, I don't think anybody was too surprised, even though, again, I've got in my notes, I don't want to keep having my notes. Ricardo Pereira deserves to come into the team. Um, we'll get onto that in a second, but again, not too surprising. Harry Winks and Wilfred and Diddy was a surprise. I mean, you, it was... Wilfred and Diddy in that last game, I thought he would... I thought Steve Cooper would start him, to be honest with you. I'm glad he didn't. But the player he put in, he's pushed Wilford back, who I think, again, was was good in the game for periods. Um, Harry Winks and as a double pivot, which I don't think worked as well compared to Skip and Winks. But it also meant that later on in the game, when we're trying to push forward, can I do this? Um, Wolf was actually pushing forward alongside Buonanotte, we'll come into, and stop bogging news, and it left Winks as a single pivot. Now, in his job, he needs somebody to kind of back him up, and we'll come on to that in just a second. Jordan Ayew on the right kept his position, which I thought was uh, a strange thing. Now, the only thing that I could think to do, if we're going to play Jordan Ayew, fine. He wasn't having the best of games. He was working hard for the team, but he wasn't doing anything that I was considered, okay, that's great. Um, or, wow, that's really good. That's really good as win as the game. He wasn't really doing the defensive side as much as he was compare it to um, blah, 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 Aston Villa, for example. Wasn't really doing that as much. You take him off after 60 minutes and you give Fatal 30 minutes. That's the only way I can justify that um, him starting, in my opinion. Just like Okazaki, run himself into the ground, give yourself something and then come off at 60 minutes and get the other person in because we've got the firepower from the, from the, from the team and from the bench to really make an impact. The fact that he played the full game, I wasn't happy. I think, again, we only use three substitutions in the in the game. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But, yeah, uh, that, again, it's, we've got five. We've got the squad to make all five. I don't know why we didn't. Uh, Bilal, we'll talk about in a second. Um, Mavididi, I think, had it again. We all thought coming into the season, it would be Fatal that would keep his place. Looking at D. Cordova Reed coming in, you're looking at Jordan Ayew coming in, you're thinking, right, Steffi's probably the one that's going to lose his place or be um, a squad player um, and then come on as kind of a super sub, which he did against Aston Villa and a couple of other teams. Steffi's held his place. And again, I'm not just saying that because he's got the star and man of the match for here, um, but I think he was he was great. Um, 
he gives you energy. He's not afraid. And that's something that I would I've loved about him. He will try the same thing again and again. And he will try and he will find luck. And he deserved his kind of we'll, we'll talk uh, we'll talk about the goal now. Um the goal that we that we scored. It's it, it's 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 a well, I looked at it, I went, Oh, that's not gonna get people off their seats. He, he does. He, the ball's in the back of the net. It just feels like, oh, it was kind of nicked around there. Somebody's put, somebody took ownership and put it in the back of the net. Is it the best kind? Of, it's a scruffy goal, but at the end of the day, the goal goes in, we get a point. Um, and that kind of summed it up. People go, well, we scored. Why are you complaining? As well, people like me are going, mm, is this sustainable? Is this a way of playing football that we're going to get the most out of the players? Probably not. Um, have we created a load of opportunities? No. In this game, I think Everton created better opportunities than us. And bearing in mind, they sit rock bottom of the table. We give them the first point of the season. They went ahead in the game. We started the game slow. And yes, people, I've heard people talk on various shows, I'm not going to call out individuals, but talk about the weather. And the weather was uh, biblical. <laughs> There's no other word for it. I've, I was, I've never experienced being from the UK, anything like that. It was, it was like, um, it was biblical. Like the, the floods were coming in, the lightning was coming down. And I know if I'm playing on that team, and I'll be real with you, I'm not a professional footballer at all, as you can probably tell, hence why I'm doing this. Um, I would have just gone into my shell. I get very funny around like wet and when I'm like, oh, I just don't, not up for it, can't be bothered. Like, I just, I'm just, just put me inside, get me an umbrella, and I want to stay home. Um, hence why I'm doing the recording even like this. Um, and I don't know if the players, I don't know if the players felt that. There was a few players having an off game. There was also, um, did it, did it, it was, maybe it was that, maybe it was the, the in the first half where they went ahead. The press wasn't working. Let's be honest. I, I, I'll be honest with you. The press that I've seen worked well before didn't look joined up. It didn't look like they knew exactly what their role was individuals were kind of like took in two minds and maybe that is again i'm not blaming this all on cooper um but some players uh, it's up to the manager the tactics to, to implement that across he's had his time that whole pre-season he's then then had a five games in some people say it will take time and i i'm definitely agree that it will take time um and then some other people won't enzo implement it from day one now the problem is with enzo and yes he did because if you're given one instruction and to do one thing, it's easier to implement. Simplicity is key. Now, with Enzo's system, it's when he gets found out. Yes, they won 3 not the weekend. For me, I'm not surprised. I think they're playing good football. But when it goes wrong, let's see what happens. Maybe that's the disadvantage of being like a little bit more tactical, tactically flexible, where people are not sure. Or people are still gotten the hangover for Enzo. Is that an excuse? Probably not. Because, let's be honest, these team, these team are rubbish. <laughs> they're part of the table. That back line that they were playing against... Um, we should have done a lot more of that. Um, he knew that, for example, Mikolenko was injured. Um, I don't think, I, I don't really know too much of his player, so I don't say he's good or bad. But look at that back line. James Tarkovsky, Michael Keane, Ashley Young, who's a right-footed player, doesn't really play on the left. And James Garner, who was, um, I don't know if he was linked with us, before he, he was linked with, he was at Forest, I think, when they battered us 4-1. Um, and I've kept an eye on him as kind of an Indidi replacement. Uh, the year that we stayed up on that. Anyway, it doesn't matter now. He's a CDM or a box to box. He's not a right winger. That back line was there to be got at. And it was, refl I mean, you look at the statistics here with like 6.6, 6.8, 7, 6.7, 7. 7.4. That team was there to, for us to really get the most out of. And did we do that? No, not in the first half. Um, let's talk about Bilal. Now, when we looked at it, it was one of the main standout things. Obviously, Ricardo's not there. I think every fan, every Leicester City fan is pretty much like, I don't know a single fan that doesn't like Ricardo. Really technical, could play multiple positions, give you everything. Um, and it's, it's, it's kind of, it's a real big point that's missed by, by um, Cooper, the fact that he's not managed to fit Ricardo into the team. Bearing in mind that Ricardo cannot play four positions, in my opinion. He can't play centre-back, like centre for centre-back. He can't play CDM as a, like a lone CDM. He can't play striker and he can't play goalkeeper. Apart from them four, Ricardo can fit in anywhere that you want him. You want to play wing? You want to play wing-back? You want to play full-back? You want to play um, um, pivot? Do you want to play attacking mid? He'll do it all for you. Um, he, could, he could arguably play a second striker. The fact that he can't get him into the team 
for me, says something about Cooper. And just to be real with you, I think that the fact that he's missing such a big trick, and like for Tawu, like he's he is a young player, and it's it's great watching him trying to figure out the Premier League. Mavidi is adapted to it quicker, so I understand playing him. But for Tawu, is a player. For, for example, is it? How do I say this? Steve Cooper seems too risk averse at this moment in time. I'd love to be proven wrong, hundred percent. But it seems like there is an opportunity to take a risk. And he, he goes, mm, I'll, I'll play El Canoes, which I thought was a good signing. Or like, for example, Jordan Ayew. Jordan Ayew, it, I, I think he's good, but he's a play it safe kind of player. will give you energy, will give you um, the work rate, but is he going to give you the end product? Probably not. So when we've got a player like Fatou that's there, that is a ball full of energy, that is supposed to be what Steve Cooper's about, developing young talent, giving them opportunities in the first team and taking their game to the next level. We're not going to do that if we give them four minutes. Jordan Ayew should have been saved for the um, Arsenal game, in my opinion. Not because I don't think he's a bad player, because he's the wrong kind of player for that time. Did he offer anything defensively? Uh, he offered a bit. He offered some. Did he offer anything offensively? Not really. And if we're playing a 4 2 3 1, we need somebody on that right hand side to, to sometimes to create something and give something. Mavididi gives you that, and I'll give him credit because if we play Mavididi and D called over, so are you and D called over Reed? I think them two are too, too similar as players. So, yeah, I'm, I'm it, 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 it's very safe and it's very like, let's not try and lose the game. And we need to take a bit more of a risk. We need to grab the grab the game and just go, look, we, here's what we're going to do with the game. Because I think if we did that in this game, everything will, I don't know what happened. I don't know what's happening. Um, bearing in mind, the likes of Villa, who again, are bounds above us. But when they were 2-0 down, they didn't go, oh, that's it now. Let's see if we can sit out a game. Or let's kind of nick something on the break. Or let's try and get something. They were like, no, we're going to go get a win. And I think that's down to the manager. The manager in enforces that mentality in Emery into the team to go, right, here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to play. And we're going to try and get the win. I never, never say die attitude. And we started to turn it on towards the end. Like, I never say die attitude, but it was too late. We were 1-1 one, one at that point. Um, and the game and the match finished. The, the match starts from minute one. You've got to play from minute one. We haven't seen a performance for the full 90. Now, I'd love to prove wrong and people come back to the video and send this to me later and go, look, you were wrong about this and now we're playing in the full 90. Then I'll eat my words. But it needs to be consistent over that period of time. Sometimes we start games slow. We're not too sure. Kind of like we did against um, um, Tottenham. But the thing is, has this moved on too much from the Tottenham game? Um, I'm probably more happy with the Tottenham considering the opponent and, the, and what we were playing against with the 1-1 draw considering against Everton. Even though we bent behind in that game um, and then we came back to 1-1, you could see what he was doing. I was like, okay, I'm happy with what Steve Cooper's doing. But have we moved on that much since? That's the thing. Um, yeah, we mentioned the draw Nayu again, mentioning him, the fact that he was substituted, he wasn't even substituted in the game where he looked like he was blowing. Um, he gave everything to the team. I don't blame him for that, but it needs to be another person to come on and go, right, here's what I'm gonna do with that information. Here's what I'm gonna do with that. Um, Edward, I didn't really concentrate on him too much, so I can't really tell you too much about him. Um, Mavididi again, he was tired, but Jordan and I was it was only a four minutes, so you might as well just give the four minutes to Mavididi, um, and give him the turnaround time. The, the, and then obviously, El Canoes, let's talk about him. He was playing with you, I think he's a good player, and I think he is a, a strong player for the future. Not for now. I think since the beginning, I've always said, get him in and then we kind of filter him in and start to bring him in incrementally and slowly. Buonanotte has played like what, 40 games in the Premier League now. He's he When he clicks or when he starts, he's here. And I appreciate the fact there's only a year for the year, but he gives, a, he, gives like, he gives a lot for the team and the team looks so much stronger with him on the pitch. Um, I said in my pre-match that I would start him. I don't see why we didn't. Um, he was, El Canoes looked a little bit slow. It looked like he didn't have that creativity. And it just takes time for a young player to play in the Premier League. It's going to take time. With Buonanotti, when he came on, the team transformed. It helped that we pushed in Diddy up with him. So we were really going for it, which was good. Um, but yeah, the, the, the I think he has to learn his lesson. And against Arsenal, I would play the three midfield that we did against Man. I would play a similar formation to what we did against um, Aston Villa. 
where we're going to have three in midfield, make it tough, make it grind, make them grind out a result, make it tough. Uh, the Emirates is a hard place to go. We'll come on to that probably when we, when we come to that. Um, but yeah, another player that, again, it took him 56 minutes to make the substitution. We give an opportunity. It didn't work. That's fine. But in the future, we need to basically get him into the team and build him in slowly. I think the first start for him, and then also with the weather and everything, I think there's a lot for him to kind of have on his back. He will become good. I genuinely think that Alcanus will come good because he's really great talent from Morocco. Just don't think this is his game as of yet. Um, Christiansen is another one where I don't think he had a great game. I don't think he's had a really... I was surprised at how good he was against um, Tottenham in a good way. I don't think he's lived up to that standard since. Um, and if that was me, again, I'd get Ricardo in, put JJ on the left. I know the fans are talking about it, but the fans keep saying it. And the fans keep basically being more proactive than the manager. What is that saying in terms of, yes, we want to play attacking football. We understand we're not going to have the ball all the time. And I've had conversations with people against, um, why are we playing three CDMs basically against um, Aston Villa? Which I understand. But against this kind of team, we need that creative outlet. Um, and Christensen didn't really give me anything in the game. Did he put a cross in that really affected the team? No. Was he defensively that great? No. Um, and on the other side, our right back position is being targeted by um, opposition managers. They're seeing that that's an area that we can really get some, some not just in this game, but in the games previous, that, that people can really understand and really hone down in that position. And it's being targeted on purpose by opposition managers. And to be honest, I understand because I'd do exactly the same if I was an opposition manager. i target that position and go, here's what I'm going to do with it. Um, I, I think Christensen should be played in the cup and he should be rested because him against Saka, is it good Saka um, on that right side? Or Martinelli, I can't remember who they play on the right now. That's that's going to be That's going to be toast. Um, we're going to need some players that are going to shore up that defence. I'd argue out bringing out Fast and bringing in Cody um, for that game. But again, I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself there. Christensen has been okay, has been good. But the fact for me is another big thing for the manager that we can all see that this team A is on the right-hand side. Um, and we've seen with Ricardo. Take it back to Leeds last year at home. About this time, I would say this time last year, but I mean, you know what I'm talking about, under the Enzo system where we were getting the high press from Farker and we were really getting gutted. Um, Ricardo was there. Say, there's two people that saved us in that game. One of them actually saved us in today's game. Matt Manson. Again, I've got no fault with him. Honestly, I'm, I'm so impressed with him as a keeper. And Ricardo. Um, the fact that it can't make it work, I think is a bit, it says more about Steve Cooper in my opinion. Um, we we are leaving it late, but it's too much. Um, and Fatou looked again disappointed when he came at full time. He just looked, he looked absolutely shot. Not shot, but it's like, oh, uh, what, what was happening? Why are we not winning? Why are we not? And I want to see that frustration. Not, oh, well, next week, um, I want to see the fact that they're frustrated. And for me, this sums up um, the kind of where we are as a fan base by this. Now, there will be somebody, now there'll be some people looking at this going, do you know what? We're in 15th. A lot of us will put your hand off for 17th place at this period of time. Oh, sorry, at the end of the season. And if it ends the end of the season, we stay up. That's all that matters. I agree. And we're not doing that, but we're on three points. But let's say Southampton, Everton, and what um, Wolves win, they jump above us. And that's easier said than done. Obviously, all three teams, that, that's the case. But we are, again, factually, we are ahead on points. I've got something, I've got a feeling that we're not really doing as good as we can do. And these simple changes of putting Ricardo in, putting Juan and Otto from the start against a lower opposition team, um, and the fact that also we're at home. And this is something that Steve Cooper, um, as statistics has gone round and said he's not won his last 18 games which is a bit frightening. But also, he's known to be better at home than he is away from home. And we've got two points at home of five games. Against Tottenham, take that. Everton, hmm. not happy with the three points. Uh, two points, I wish, two, one, three points, one point for this. Um, and they were there to be got at. So for me, it's when the, the overall narrative and the simple narrative, you can understand why people are positive. But the more you analyse it and you go, look, these issues can be fixed. Um, the pressing needs to be a lot better. I don't think it was as good. 
Um, and the fact is we didn't win at home. And maybe Southampton as well. The fact they drew against Ipswich at home. Ipswich might be going, hmm, do you know, that's a better point because we're away from home. Um, Everton are going to feel, hmm, that's good. We've got a point away from home. We got a point at home. It makes a difference. Think about when we're playing in Europe as well. It makes a difference when you're playing at home compared away from home. Um, and for me, again, just bringing this up, the table kind of, except it's only five games in. We're going to get better, etc. cetera. Um, don't worry about this. But we are close to the bottom. And um, for me, it's interesting to see what we do in the next in the next game. Again, we'll be coming to you hopefully live if I can find a recording uh, or find a, uh, find a stream for it after Tuesday's game. So yeah, thank you very much again. Uh, thank you very much for everybody for watching and paying attention to the channel. I've read your comments. Um, I know it's overall negative. Um, let's be honest with you. But again, that's just my thoughts on the game. I'm just hoping that, look, we learn from our lessons and we put this forward and we move on because these fakes are simple. Bringing in better opposition, better players, adapting to our opposition, which again, I don't have a problem with adapting to our opposition. Um, but I think the play selection is slightly wrong and it's, it's too negative for me. I want to see us go for it. And if we're going to go for something, that makes it a lot better for us, in my opinion. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Leave it in the comments down below. Appreciate all your thoughts and um, we'll be back on Thursday for Tuesday for the next um, game. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the next video. So goodbye.